And Senator Barrasso will begin. Well, thanks so much, Mr. Chairman. Let me start uh, with Ms. Owens, if I could. You know, a Wyoming coal mine, Black Butte, has been pursuing a lease modification for about a decade. Uh, multiple points in the process, uh, your office has suggested the review was just about complete, only to change course and then require an additional review. Uh, last month, the office did it again. Uh, the office informed the company that it must now complete an environmental impact statement before it will agree to the mine plan modification, before your office will agree. Why do we keep moving the goalposts for this project? Thank you for that question, Senator Barrasso. I'm familiar with the situation in Black Butte. Um, what happened in that situation, you are correct. We had been working on an e, uh, re reviewing under an environmental analysis for the mine, but a recent Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals decision was rendered that had direct impact on several of the issues that we were reviewing and the analyses that we were performing for the environmental review for Black Butte. And that required, our, we did a legal review, we had a legal review done, and it was determined that the decision required uh, an environmental impact statement rather than an environmental assessment. And one of the reasons that um, we, we want to make sure that the decisions that, that we make during these environmental reviews will sustain judicial scrutiny because for us to get in litigation, most if not all of our NEPA decisions are in fact litigated. And if we don't adhere to the controlling uh, court decisions, we're going to risk getting those decisions vacated or having to start all over, which is just going to require additional time. It, it just seems to me that you know, the, the excuse of litigation, which is, is real, the litigation uh, is real. It often justifies inaction of permitting decisions, withdrawing, changing, moving the goal lines. I just don't think it should take a decade to obtain a lease modification, and at some point there's a responsibility to act on the mine plan modification, and if sued, defend, defended in, in court. It just seems that a, a 10 years is too long. If, Mr. Newton, the abandoned mine land program depends on cooperative federalism, as, as you've talked about. That means that the states execute the program with guidance and support from the appropriate federal agencies. How could the Office of Surface Mining improve its relationship with states to ensure that the program runs smoothly? You hit on several points about additional tracking and things like that, that that pretty much across the board all the states say is unnecessary and is going to create a bunch of burden uh, for us and not improve any mine sites. Um, we have communicated that with OSM. Um, and another thing that that we see that, um, you know, could help out is, you know, if they want us to get put the work on the ground, get the mines closed, then uh, not having separate grant applications, multiple grant applications when they're the same. We uh, had suggested when we had heard that the bill funding was coming down the pike, we asked them, uh, if, if you can put one grant application for, all, for both bill and fee-based, you would save an, a tremendous amount of time for the states, and we could not waste so much resources. So those are just a couple of points that we have tried to communicate with OSM. Uh, it doesn't seem like um, that they hear what we say, but they don't really realize what a, a burden it is for the states. So following up in my opening statement, I explained that the Office of Surface Mining seems to be throwing up what you said, new hurdles for states to uh, access funding to reclaim abandoned mine lands. Uh, the, the hurdles include a requirement that states assess the economic impact of reclamation projects. They also include a requirement that states assess the potential greenhouse gas emissions reductions of the projects. Uh, what impact do these new requirements have on our ability in Wyoming to carry out the abandoned mine land program? I, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that um, trying to evaluate how much greenhouse gas emissions is coming off of a two mile long high wall, I don't know that anybody can do that. I mean, you could guess at it, but I don't really see the value in it because you're not 
I mean, you're generating data, as you mentioned earlier. You're not really closing off the mine, and you're wasting huge resources. The, uh, you know, the abandoned mine land program supports high-priority mine reclamation work across the country. Can you talk about some of the projects in Wyoming? You're familiar with the small town of Hanna, which is a coal community. That's the only reason it grew there. Uh, it's a town of 700. The coal mine is closed now. We just finished our first bill-funded project. Uh, it was, uh, the, the tiny town has two arterial paved roads that go to it. One of those roads has been closed for two years because the subsidence from the mines below it had surfaced and created holes right in the middle of the road. So the county had to shut the road down. We finished that project, uh, very successful. Uh, we, we know it's a gigantic benefit for the community, safety issues for fire trucks and things like that. But... We don't know how to put an economic impact on that value. That's not what we do. Yeah. We close mine sites. Yeah. And they just opened a really beautiful Boys and Girls Club program in, in Hannah. I was there for the ribbon cutting and the grand opening. So thanks, Mr. Chairman.